The 55th wing has been making its mark on history since the middle of the 20th century, with its earliest success coming in support of World War II. Shortly after its activation, the 55th would write its first chapter in the history books as it was called into action in support of World War II. It was at this time, less than a year after its inception, that the 55th Pursuit Group was redesignated as the 55th Fighter Group. During World War II, the 55th was charged with providing protection for 8th Air Force bombers carrying out daylight bombing raids over Germany. This unit would be the first to operate the P-38 Lightning in the European theater and would eventually transition into the newer and more versatile P-51 Mustang. The war soon came to an end in 1945 with victory in Europe and the surrender of Japan. Many combat units were deactivated with the drawdown, including the 55th Fighter Group. This highly distinguished unit would complete its combat tour of duty with more than 600 combat missions and an impressive record of 400 destroyed enemy aircraft. They were also credited with 16 aces and more than 90 victories, earning them two Distinguished Unit Citation Awards. Although the days of the 55th Fighter Group were over, its storied history would continue on. The beginning of the Cold War and stand-up of Strategic Air Command would institute many changes within the nation's military. The 55th was reactivated under Strategic Air Command as the 55th Reconnaissance Group in 1947, changing its mission forever. The next few years were turbulent for the 55th, to say the least, as its identity, mission, and role within SAC fell into place. After many organizational changes and reassignments to Florida, Kansas, and Puerto Rico, the 55th finally settled on a name and a place to call home. By 1952, the now designated 55th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing, or 55th SRW, was permanently assigned to the newly named Forbes Air Force Base in Topeka, Kansas. The 38th and 338th Strategic Reconnaissance Squadrons were assigned to the 55th SRW and would execute photo reconnaissance missions. As the 55th SRW began to take shape, another form of intelligence called Electronic Intelligence, or ELINT, was quickly emerging. This prompted the activation of the 343rd Strategic Reconnaissance Squadron, which would become the ELINT Squadron at the 55th. This unit was made up of specially trained electronic countermeasure officers, or CROWs, who were responsible for electronic intelligence gathering, executed from RB-50 aircraft. This aircraft was soon replaced by the all-jet-powered RB-47 Stratojet, which was a modified version of the Air Force's B-47 bomber. This aircraft was capable of much longer distances and would become the primary aircraft used by the 55th SRW for more than a decade. Members of the 55th were often deployed on short notice to remote locations throughout the world to perform highly secretive and often dangerous reconnaissance missions. Many were flown from detachments out of Japan and England, which still host 55th Wing detachments today. One of the most notable times in the history of the 55th SRW occurred in 1960, when an RB-47 performing a mission off the coast of Russia was shot down by a Russian MiG over the Barents Sea. Four of six crew members died, creating an international incident during a period when the Cold War was heating up. The 55th SRW would find itself at the leading edge of the Cold War in 1962, when it was determined that the Soviets were moving missiles onto the island of Cuba. The Cuban Missile Crisis brought the U.S. to its closest point of nuclear war. As an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States. The 55th and its RB-47s were called into action to perform rigorous surveillance operations to ensure Russia was complying with directives to dismantle and remove all of its missiles. Four years later, in 1966, the 55th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing would make its next and final move as it was ordered to transition from Forbes Air Force Base to Offutt Air Force Base, Nebraska, home to Headquarters Strategic Air Command. Soon after its arrival at Offutt, the 55th SRW would undergo many changes in aircraft and mission. The wing would begin to phase out the older RB-47 aircraft for the more capable Boeing 707 model. 
This larger aircraft could support the sensitive electronic equipment requirements of the 55th and would become its primary aircraft, identified as either EC or RC-135. Strategic Air Command's Airborne Command and Control System, notoriously known as the Looking Glass, would now be accomplished from the EC-135 aircraft and operated by the 55th SRW, while the Global Reconnaissance Mission was transferred to the RC-135. The 70s and 80s were very busy times for the wing. In 1975, the E-4B Nightwatch and the 1st Airborne Command and Control Squadron moved to Offutt, becoming an asset of the 55th SRW. Throughout the 80s, the wing participated in many high-profile missions throughout the world, including reconnaissance operations in Grenada and Libya. The wing would also continue flying looking glass missions around the clock until 1990, when the Soviet Union began to dissolve, thereby ending the Cold War. After many years of dedicated service, the EC-135 Looking Glass had reached the end of an era and would be decommissioned. Its mission was transferred to the newer E-6B, operated by the United States Navy. As the Cold War came to an end, tensions in the Middle East were beginning to escalate with the invasion of Kuwait by its neighboring country, Iraq. As usual, the 55th was called upon to lead the fight. On August 8, 1990, the wing deployed to the Persian Gulf in support of Operation Desert Shield, where it would provide 24-hour real-time intelligence collection in support of warfighting commanders and key decision makers. This role continued on throughout Operation Desert Storm, where the wing logged more than 7,500 flying hours. Although the war would end quickly, the 55th's role in the Middle East would not. The valuable intelligence-gathering capabilities of the 55th has kept it there since the beginning of the conflict. In January of 2007, the 55th Wing and RC-135 VW Rivet Joint Program marked 6,000 days of continuous service in the area of operation, unsurpassed by any organization in the history of the Air Force. In 1991, the 55th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing was renamed the 55th Wing to reflect the diverse missions inherited by the wing. Today, the Fightin' 55th is Air Combat Command's largest and most diverse wing. Its mission is to execute worldwide intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, electronic and information warfare, presidential support, command and control, and treaty verification. The 55th Wing's flying assets are commanded by a host of squadrons that execute a wide range of unique and dynamic functions. The Wing's intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft include the RC-135 VW Rivet Joint, RC-135U Combat Scent, and RC-135S Cobra Ball. These aircraft can be considered the workhorses of the Wing and are often deployed throughout the world. Other aircraft include the WC-135 Constant Phoenix, charged with the detection of nuclear testing through long-range atmospheric air sampling. The OC-135B Open Skies, which promotes global peace through non-provocative observation. And E-4B Nightwatch. The E-4B provides a highly survivable command, control, and communication center to direct U.S. forces in the event of a national emergency or destruction of ground command and control centers. In February of 2003, the 55th Wing would inherit yet another unique and invaluable mission. This would come by the way of the 55th Electronic Combat Group. This geographically separated group, which operates from davis Moffin Air Force Base, Arizona, provides warfighting commanders with an airborne electronic attack capability carried out from specially modified C-130 Hercules aircraft. These highly sophisticated aircraft, also known as Compass Call, provide information warfare capabilities through communication jamming and electromagnetic quick reaction capabilities, supporting air, ground, and naval operations. These services have been instrumental in fighting the war on terror, which has contributed to the group's long-lasting support of Operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. Round speed 150, three left drift, four left drift. Okay, for the road. It is often said that the 55th Wing leads the fight by providing global intelligence and information warfare capabilities to warfighting commanders and leaders in every corner of the world. 
The 55th Wing's storied history can be tied to nearly every sizable armed conflict, making it one of the most decorated organizations in the Air Force. Its rich heritage, dedicated people, and great worldwide missions truly define the 55th Wing motto. The sun never sets on the fightin' 55th.